All right, hey guys, so we are on our way to IWS right now, um, Idaho Record Sales in Mountain Home, Idaho. It's about an hour drive from where we're at in Nampa, Idaho. Um, but yeah, Chuck, Chuck Ciccarelli, he's the owner. We're gonna be meeting with him. He's gonna give us a tour of the place. I'm really excited to show you guys. Um, we'll start at IWS where they sell uh, motorhomes, trailers, aluminum trailers, um, and as well as uh, tow trucks. And that's where they actually invented the side puller. Um, and we were the first in the world to buy actually. Um, but then we'll go over to uh, In the Ditch and we'll meet Chuck. We'll go to his office. Uh, he does know we're coming, so he's expecting us. So he's excited to uh, he's excited to show us around. And we're going to take a look at their new factory as well. They're building a new building, a $16 million building that he's excited to show that as well. Um, so, so Chuck has created such a unique culture at this place that I'm really excited for you guys to see. When you walk into the door, and it's not just me, I mean, they'll know you by name. Uh, they'll have they'll have TVs all over the place where they put your business name on there with your name. They'll say welcome, you know, so and so from so and so place. And uh, last year they did that with us with our tow truck that we built. They they had a big write up of my dad and I from Country Parrot how we bought the first truck in 1999 from them. Uh, anyway, it's really cool. Uh, they'll, they'll greet you at the door. Hey, you can I get you something a Pepsi, a water? They have a really cool culture there that hopefully you guys will be able to uh, to see when we get there. So one thing about Chuck um, that's really neat is he's really active in his community. He really cares about his community. Um, and what they did at their factory was actually make 3,000 uh, face shields for local hospitals. And I just think that's just really cool. One thing that got Chuck to where he is today is his ability to see something and, and just ask himself, how can I make this better? How can I improve? And that was where the side puller was a big deal. It's like he looked at, it, looked at the roll bed and thought, what can I do to make this more of a recovery truck? How can I do this better? And you'll hear this more from him. I don't want to talk too long here, but you'll hear this from him. But man, it's just really cool what he's created and what he's done. And it's a really cool success story. And that's what I really love about, about IWS. Hey Steve. Hey Dustin. How you doing? Pretty good, man. How good. Are you? Good. Good. Yeah. So I assume Chuck told you that we're gonna be doing a tour today. Heck yeah. Cool. You Very wanna show me around? Or sure. do you wanna start? Well, what what what's in what what are you looking to see? Uh, let's see where you make your tow trucks. Let's do All that. Right. All right. We'll come back there and talk about parts here in a minute. Cool. Yeah, we're gonna be heading over to in the ditch after this and oh, very see good. Chuck. So cool. come on in. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, so this is the truck shop. You know, we've been assembling tow trucks in here. Cool. As you know, we buy the chassis and we buy the wrecker body mm -hmm. and we put the two together. But what we really shine is we get to uh, use a lot of our craftsmanship to, and innovation to come up with better ways of assembling them. Mm -hmm. You know, we do a lot of, we take a lot of pride in our wiring and our, and our hydraulic work. We know that your livelihood and your life is at stake out on the side totally. of the road. So we really work our butts off to try to put together the best, yeah. best unit. For sure possible to make sure you guys are protected out there yeah and one of your big things is your your in the ditch toolboxes and side puller stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah i think i heard you're gonna go check out in the ditch here in a little bit yep. but uh but yeah we use a lot of the products that they built across the street right here very cool another thing that we're really excited about is our lean journey we've been trying to figure out how to cut waste out of the manufacturing process so we i'll show you our toolbox over here oh yeah you know we orange toolbox means that if you have an orange tool it goes back in the orange wow. toolbox that's awesome and we've used kaizen foam to show everything that has way a you home always and know if, where a tool is if somebody needs it if an extension's missing it's blazingly clear that it's True. missing at the end of the shift we can inventory our tools and make sure everything's here and what we've really pride ourselves on is trying to reduce waste mm -hmm. you know once upon a time we used to think that a craftsman mechanic would bring his own tools and we had guys bring a mountain of a toolbox with a hundred drawers and he spent all day pulling out drawers trying to find the tool he was looking for and then we had the other guys that came with a little flip top toolbox with a broken screwdriver and a rusty crescent wrench and they didn't have the tools to do the yeah, job. Yeah you're like that's not gonna work guys. So we learned a long time ago it's way better just to invest in the tools that we know we need to put the totally. trucks together. That way you know then, you always have the right tool for the job. Right. Yeah. And then we've strategically located them, one on either side of each bay. So we don't, we don't have technicians assigned to each toolbox. We want them to get the tool that's closest to the job they're working on. 
So if they're working on this side of the truck, come to this box. If they're working on that side of the truck, go to that box. And at the end of... And that's part of lean manufacturing. It's absolutely. less steps, less... Take fewer steps. Increase efficiency. Yeah. Right, which translates to we can build a better product in a shorter amount of time and offer a better value to you. Absolutely. So awesome. It's, it's pretty cool. Very cool. We invest a lot in technology. We do all of our work instructions, all of our build orders and everything are done off of, of uh, PCs. So you find a PC at every workstation. So. Very cool. We don't have outdated paper prints floating around the shop. Right. So here's awesome. a small light duty Dodge that we're putting it's together for a now. company in Washington. And on the other side of that is a, a uh, 38 foot motorhome. Beautiful motorhomes. That's a stock unit that'll be ready for sale here shortly. Coolest motorhomes I've ever seen here at IWS. I love <laughs> your guys' motorhomes. Super fancy. Cool. Right there. So this truck we're putting together for a company out of Washington, and you'll see we got a lot of the accessories, these are the in the ditch trash can mounts that are built across the street, um, and the uh, uh, speed mount, dolly mount, trash can holder. Broom. But you see, we got everything mocked up and taped in place, and we try to get the customer along in the process. So we've mocked all this up, sent photos off to them, asked them how they like the layout, and make sure it's going to work right for them. I'm not going to be the one using this out at two o'clock in the morning, so yeah. I want to make sure it's right for them. So we took a bunch of photos, sent it off to the customer. They get to be involved in the process of where everything goes and, and how cool. the truck's laid out. One thing I like about this too is you guys care enough to put down a towel so that you're not scratching anything. <laughs> I mean, it shows that you guys just take care of everything you guys touch, everything you guys work on. That's yeah, very part cool. Of the process. Part of the process. Yep. So okay. this is our showroom here. Um, of course, we got our hands in a lot of different industries. We're dealing mm -hmm. with the towing equipment. We're dealing with trailers and we're dealing with RVs, so we have a lot of different parts and pieces to share with you. Um, this is kind of our RV and trailer corner. You see, we got a cutaway of a toy hauler trailer to show you how they're manufactured. It's kind of all aluminum, no wood, all, all aluminum. aluminum. I love no it. Wood. So cool. Uh, but it's really cool. ATC provided these for us to show you how your trailer's built. Oh yeah, these, they're definitely. Uh, and of course, we got oh, our service guys right working up here. Yep. And then if we spin around to the other side. Over on this side, you have a lot of our different straps and tie down equipment and stuff for the, for the towing industry. And then over in this corner is a lot of the in the ditch towing products that we build. Oh yeah, all the accessories on the wall there. And, uh, and you'll get to see across the street, real world, how they're putting those Where, together. How they're built, so, very cool. Okay. This is our reception area. Um, one thing that we've really pride ourselves in our is our customer service absolutely and uh, we feel like the first thing that we can do is put your name in lights and invite you here when you show up and make sure that you know we're prepared for you and let everybody else in the company know you know if i'm walking around with somebody they know it might be uh, jeff that's showing up this afternoon they'll know who it is that i'm out walking around with and everybody will be informed we're trying to share a lot of information you know them by name and, but really yeah. we we care about every one of our customers and the time that they spend with us and we want to make sure that we we make it a, a custom experience for them. So we do our best to get their name up on, on the board and lights. Every Even time. shows what time they'll be coming in so everyone right. knows. It's very cool. Thanks, very yeah. cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Steve. I appreciate the tour. No problem. Thanks Th for coming around. Yeah, thanks for showing us. We'll go bug Chuck across the street, see what he's up to. They do some amazing stuff over there. I'm right excited now. to show the viewers. Yeah. You're thanks gonna, again. You're gonna be thanks, guys. Right. Thanks, appreciate man. it. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Chuck, Chuck told us to meet him at his uh, training room, so we're just coming into the training room here. We're, uh... Oh, there he is. <laughs> I should have known you'd not. use the pole. That's great. I, got, I saw you coming across the park. Oh, that's so. awesome. Okay, so this says eye protection required. Do we need to put on safety glasses or? Absolutely, if you're doing, if you're doing a task that requires it. Okay. And walking through our plant does, does not, not require, require it. Okay. Like, Look, I really want to say something about this. Okay. There's a gentleman back that worked for Toyota and his name was Shigeo Shingo. And he argued that you would go into factories and they have all these signs that say accident free for X amount of days. Right. And they put signs up, lift with your back and right. use your gloves and all of this. And he said, at Toyota, he wants you to spend the money on preventing the problem from happening in the first place. Instead of having We don't a need a sign to tell us. True. Now you need a sign to be legal. Right. <laughs> but the reality is, let's put processes in place so metal doesn't fly around. Yeah, I like that. You're gonna see when we walk into our welding shop Shields and they and, see us, yeah. so they care about one another, right? Mm -hmm. 
So if somebody is a guest in your house, are you going to turn the music down? Yeah, you? yeah. So my guys and girls, they're going to stop grinding when we're in the area because they care about us. We'll put that to the test. So no, and yeah, and yeah, I swear to God, this I is not it. rehearsed. I know. It's but I'm very telling true. you, some people they just don't know do, we're coming in at all. It's just a yeah. waste of time. Yeah, sure. I'm not going to buy safety glasses. We used to hand them out. Yeah, because it, you know, that was the it, that was the thing to do. Right? You know, and yeah. you got to wear steel toe shoes. I was on a mine in Nevada delivering uh, towing a truck one time, a heavy, and and they wouldn't let me out of the truck unless I put steel toed shoes on. So I had to put these plastic things on. Oh, I'm uh, like, why? <laughs> well, it's a mine. It's a requirement. Well, yeah, this is stupid. Yeah, you should find a way to prevent this from happening so that I don't need to wear them. Wear steel toed boots in environments that you need to wear them. Right. Wear safety glasses in areas in, where, where you, you need, need to, wear to wear them. I like and, that. And we have designated areas. Yeah. But I don't. I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it. That's cool. All right, All right let's check it out. So this is our 2030 laser and it boogies right along. Oh yeah. Right now it's cutting uh, stainless steel for toolboxes. Oh, these are for your in the ditch boxes? Yep. Cool. Most amazing toolboxes ever. And you sell them all over the world, right? All over the world. All over the world. Yeah. Um, one of our big accounts is South Korea right now. Really? That's one of your big accounts is South Korea. We that produce so our cool. dolly manual in German. Korean, Japanese. Wow, that's so cool. Well, they're just, the bottom line is there. no one makes a toolbox like you do. They well, last, their longevity of it, they, the usefulness, I mean, they're just amazing. We love them, we've, we've always had them. We won't build a truck without them. What, well, everything we do here is because we believe we could do it better. Yes. And the towing industry, I felt, we never got the respect. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's neat about these lasers is the new building, they're three to four times faster, the new lasers oh, really? are coming they need. And this is this seems super fast already, but they're gonna be even faster. Wow. So cool. Myron's over here pulling parts. I'm gonna walk into our marketing department real quick okay. and our nesting. Uh, here's our nesting department. So we cut about uh, 30,000 parts a day wow. and this person nesting this these are the, our two lasers and they they they're nesting out because the night shift will come in and run till oh, one okay. in the morning oh, and wow. then the machines continue to run automated with nobody here Wow um, but we're kind of out of room this used to be a storage closet okay hey Dave this is our marketing Hello. department is Zach here All right filming so we even built our own desk because nobody built a desk just find a way to build it and make it better we just right made it better that's yeah. awesome um, but there's normally a person there and a person here and a person there and then uh, this is our think tank so we designed <laughs> and built that that's awesome so you can go in and have some quick little uh, meetings in there and then we have our own videographer did you go in our recording studio we did Yep, Steve showed us. We have a great us. big one going in in the new in building. In the new building, that's so and cool. Then, I can't wait so, to see that. Again, a place for everything and everything in its place, right? Yep. Got to so, be organized. Everything's ready to go. That way when somebody needs something, they know exactly where it is every time. And put yep. it back because they respect their coworkers. There you go. Very cool. All right. Okay. Moving along. This is our 4,000 kilowatt laser. Wow. That is so cool. What's it making right now? Uh, is that Razorback? Yeah, these are off-road products. Very cool. And then we have, uh, well, I'll walk you down here. So, you see the blue light on? Uh, oh yeah, yes. That means yes. he's waiting for material. Okay, green the green means good. Sam's in good shape. That laser's running good, green, and the other one around the corner is green. And I like how they're, they're high enough that you can see them from wherever you are in the building. Yep. So if I'm standing over here, I can still see his green light over there. 
And if Sam goes to red on one of these, somebody else can come help. Gotcha. This is what's known as a bottleneck. Um, we've overproduced, we've overcut more than we can bend. Gotcha. So they just kind of put here in the waiting. Right. Uh, but they've actually stopped producing. Like that's why that laser is now stopped. Okay. There's no sense producing more. So somebody from the laser department will come over here and help get this flowing again. Gotcha. Uh, but each one of these are orders for somebody. Okay. Awesome. These are universal mounts. These are going to Zips. Totally okay, that's it. Nice. Um, and they're all tagged so you know exactly which cart belongs to customer. which. Yep. Yeah, to each customer. Awesome. And then the product will go from there. This is cool. I like watching this work. Oh, Suction yeah. cup. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah, the trash can mounts. And these are the for, famous uh, trash can mounts. Abel Ford. Huh. Okay. And so he's going to set it up real time. You could come inside. Everything's a touch screen. And them LED lights tell him where to put his tooling. Oh, wow. So see these lights? They tell him where to place his tool set. And then everything is set up on the touch screen. So that's a laser that shoots a laser beam across, and it makes sure he has the right tooling. Oh, really? But Sam never makes a mistake. We'll see. We'll see, Sam. Until now. <laughs> when the camera's on, yep. So he's just aligning them now. Right. This has hydraulic clamping, so he'll push a button and it locks everything in. This is probably the most advanced press brake on planet Earth right now. Wow, really? Yeah, this looks is a like half it. a million dollars. Whoa. Half a million dollars on one machine. Wow. Well, let me back up. This machine's about 385000 Close enough. Might as well call it half a million. Close enough. <laughs> so he's going to bend a trash can mount. OK. Yeah. And he's doing that by the foot pedal there? Yep. OK. And the lights are illuminated, telling him where to go next. And it's also changing the part here. On oh, the there screen. you go. OK. Wow. Yep, there it is. And then it shows him the next step as well. Wow. And those trash can mounts are really strong. You guys made a video showing how strong they Rick are. Rick Stallion. Yeah, Rick Stallion. I loved it. Where is Rick Stallion? We haven't seen him in a long time. He's over there selling motor I know, homes. but we need to see Rick we Stallion. We need more Rick again. Stallion. We need more Rick Stallion. He needs to sell the motor home. We've had people call to talk to him. Really? Yeah. Can I talk to Rick Stallion? That's awesome. <laughs> he has to change his voice. Yeah, here, let me get him for him. There's his Rick Stallion. <laughs> That's awesome. There it but is. Look huh? at all the bends, the oh, precision, yeah. how close he's come on all the corners. Yep. So, wow, cool. Then, once everything gets bent, the product comes around the corner. And it stages here. So, all of these parts were bent today. Okay. This was just today. Oh, this was in the last probably hour. The last hour. <laughs> wow. And then everything here. So this is interesting. I want you to remember this. You know the breakover bar on the dolly where the yeah. little, and this is what it starts out as. No way. I swear to God, a solid chunk of steel. Wow. Because we wanted to get control of the fit. We were having problems with the tubing. OK. So hopefully I can show you how we're making them. That is crazy. Here's a cell where we're building axles. So this is drilling the aluminum axle automatically. 
He's drilling there and the saw is loading the material automatically. Wow. And he just does it in a continual circle. He's blue on the saw, which means the saw is waiting for material. Okay. That is awesome. We built all this. What, the? The drill. Really? This is yep. all built by you guys? Yep. We bought the drill motors, but everything and else built we that. designed. Yep. Wow. We designed that too. Wow. And then the product goes from there. There's Team Red right there, part of them. Team Red, all right. Have you yeah. been used today? Yeah, we have a problem with this, so we're looking at it. So, so Team Red was called in because they have a problem with a dolly, so they're okay. in working on uh, guiding people. Trying to find the solution. Very cool. So, these are our lathes, and they're not running right now. This one's waiting for material. All our own dolly spindles, and this is our through spindle. This is where the grease goes in the end, comes oh, out, and pushes yeah, yeah. backwards. Wow. And that's something, there's yeah. like a misstatement within the industry. There's some people that have greasable hubs. Yeah. Well, when you pump the grease into the hub, the grease goes in, and it, it just keeps filling until it either blows the seal out or right. pushes the dust cap off. Ours, the grease goes in, then pushes the old grease out, and you pull the plug off and it pushes the old grease out the end of the hole. Which keeps this new grease still keeps in there. Keeps the new grease in. Wow. The other one just pumps old grease in and it's just a bunch of BS. That, that, just, people... goes, that just goes back to what you guys can do to make something better. Right. You've just found a way to get rid of that problem and fix it. Well, and this through spindle greasing, we didn't develop that, but we brought it to our dolly. To make it, yeah. To make them better. Very cool. And right. then, we can go from there. Here's our mill. So it's in machining parts right now. Now while it's machining the parts, you can see it indexing to the next tool. Oh, so that we're not is wasting so time. cool. Now watch, it's gonna change tools. No, <laughs> look how fast that is. What? You gotta get a shot of this here, Aaron, when you that's <laughs> well the... it won't index till it does the next one. But part. look at all those set, look at all the different drills. That is so cool. Wow. What? I can't even know how fast that thing goes. Walk you over here in the hardware. So, let me turn this off. So this is our hardware department. So at In The Ditch, we pull thousands of parts a day. Oh yeah. And we use a two-bin system. So let's see if I can find one. Okay, so in this bin, when you, if you pulled the last bolt, yeah, you would, you would then pull from the second bin, and as soon as you touch the part in this, it would trigger a reorder. All right, let me start over. <laughs> All right, so here's your bolt bin, right? Okay, and you used all of them. You used all of them, and it's empty. Okay, now what? Now what happens at your organization? You go and find more, I don't know, I don't know. You see what I mean? Yeah, I do. So here's what happens at In The Ditch. You take this order card oh, and you throw it in a bin. Oh, I see. Then purchasing at the end of the day. No way. They, so this bin's empty, then right? they know what they need to So purchase. they wrote 50 because it tells you 50 are needed. Yeah. The, it's due 7-7. Seven, seven. Wow. There's the purchase order and it's hung here. So now you pull from this bin, are you with me? Well, yeah, while you wait for the order to come right. in to fill this bin. And once wow. them 50 come, then they'll put the remainder of these here and refill this with 50. Makes sense. And it's Smart. called a Kanban. Yeah. And, and there's no wasted time trying to look for, or being not having what you need right. when you go for your hardware. Everybody knows that them are on order too. You don't have to freak out. Empty, empty. No, nope. you can see they're you on see order. They're red cards, yeah. Now we just ordered yesterday. Wow. It's called Pick to Light, and I I should have showed you. We have 400 bins, and each of them is going to have a laser and a light, a freaking laser beam, freaking laser. Beam. And 
when you type in the part number of the product, the bins are going to illuminate and then a wow. digital light tells you how many to take out. No way. We just spent $75,000 on that. On that alone. But it, it's going to increase efficiency. It's all about making our customers look good and getting our accuracy up. Yeah. Because you don't really care that today we pulled parts for a thousand items. You only care that your bolt's missing. True. That's and you're right. True. Yeah. Oh, here's our tubing bender. Watch this bad boy. Hey, Mike, could I get you to yep. just step back so they can film? This is our uh, horn CNC bender. And this is where we build the Razorback product. We have some more stuff coming for the towing industry. But since COVID hit, the towing industry has just pretty much died. Yeah, it has. It's hurt a lot. But your Razorback's got to be doing really well. Phenomenal. It's got to be, yeah. Well, that's just a ladder. That's How many pieces do we need to reorder, Dustin? Two. There you go. <laughs> awesome. It's not rocket science, no, it's right? Not. But we cut these, so hopefully you don't put the wrong tubing in. Because it's by size. It's by size, yep. yep. Look, a uh, million dollars a month will go through these steel racks. Million dollars a month, just through this. <laughs> Holy cow. Here's our powder coating. It's one of the toughest jobs here. The people that work in here are just incredible. Really? Um, we call it the end of ditch weight loss program because <laughs> it is so hot. So the yes. on light is flashing red. Yeah. So that told him it's time to pull that out of okay. the oven. It's 450 degree oven. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, you can feel the heat mittens. from back here. Yeah. Oh, there they are. Look at that powder coat. I love powder coat. Now they'll Beautiful. reset the end on light and it'll go to blue, which means it's waiting for it's material. Waiting for more material. Green means we're cooking. So you can see we got two open lanes right now. Wow. This is uh, the paint powder coating for department powder coating. stuff. It even has their boot size, their bib size. <laughs> and then all the parts here are racked. These are axle mounts that are going to Purpose record sales. Huh. So they're wrapped up right here and they'll go into the wash bay and then they go into a dry off oven and then they get powder coated and then they transfer through the oven. Our new facility, the, the, it's all automated. The powder coating machine is 165 feet long. Wow. Yeah, $1.2 million. Ooh. But that's our commitment to the towing industry. We, awesome. we want to be known as the absolute best. Yeah, for sure. Wow. These are products here that are staging to go to the weld shop. So all of these have been bent, they're kitted up, and we try to send everything in the exact order that the welder needs it, because we want to make them look good. Right. So when they bend the parts, like Thomas, all of these parts are in the exact order that the welder needs to take they it grab off. Them off. Yep. Holy cow. So these guys have a lot of pride. That's the... I like that. That's the powder coating department. But see the Team Red guy poking his... I was wondering. <laughs> that's funny. I'm here too. <laughs> you got a shot of that? <laughs> see Kyle in the red poking over the corner? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so cool. This is probably my favorite, because I love welding. So this is so cool for me. Razorback, accessory. So you can see that end on light is blue. That means he's waiting on more material. Yep. Here's another one. These guys are rocking. Yep, there's the uh, chocks for the heavies or whatever they're Mike, called. Mike, you get the gold star today for making me look good, because they wanted to know if we needed to wear our safety glasses. And I said, why? When we walk through, our guys care about us, and they'll stop working. And he did. You're right. He goes, well, we'll see. And we'll I said, see. Well, I guess we'll see. He's sitting there just waiting until we and leave. You didn't even notice it happened. I didn't. Did I didn't even notice it. That's funny. Carry on, sir. <laughs> so everything we do is timed, and you can see the work instruction. Okay. So each operator has two uh, televisions in front of them. Yeah. 
Uh, here's the side puller cell. There's a side puller right here. And, and so this is a cart that we made that lays it, it it's counterbalanced and they flip the side puller on its side so we can get powder up inside the legs. Cool. Can you lay this down? Can you lay this down? This is something we've been working on to really improve the finish quality. So that way when they powder coat, now they can you don't, reach inside you all You don't miss it. that. In the old days, we used to have to turn the paint gun up and gotcha. we would miss something. So. But you found a way to make it easier and more efficient. So this will be done in one minute, an hour, 10 minutes, and 14 seconds. Wow. There's their work instructions. But I want to point out, I didn't come up with that time. They did. Okay. They're developing a standard. Okay. So if somebody's been... If, Trevor's been welding in here, and it, this is his average time to build it. Now you kind of have an expectation. Right. This is called a Minomi cart, and this is how everything is delivered for the welder. This is going to Golden West Towing Equipment. Everything is in the order that the welder needs it to weld. So they work from the outside in. Wow. Was that a Razorback sale? Thanks, Trevor. Was that a Razorback sale? It was. The that's awesome. So this robot, what's it going on? Waiting on material. Waiting on material. We're good to go here, so if you come over here, it's a little bright, but we're welding dollies. This is uh, our Ferris wheel robot. Don't look straight at the light, but won't hurt your camera. Whew. You're gonna have to watch it when it's done welding because it does something pretty cool here. Oh, okay. A lot of welds on a dolly. Oh, yeah. I gotta look at what's going on. Oh! Now it's reaming the nozzle, automatically cutting the wire off and spraying the anti spatter oh. in the end. <laughs> now the next part's gonna come in. Look at that, look at now, that. Now uh, a laser's gonna come out. You can't see it, but there's a red light. The laser's looking to make sure we have the parts loaded in the right orientation. Wow. Poke yoke. Yep, there you go. See, error proofing. And then that rotates to somebody who's on the other end who yep, can do we can what they need to do. go around to the other side. So Brad's over here pulling, he's, he's already pulled with the ones off and he's reloading for the next one. And this is his cool down station to let the parts cool. And then he'll do a final inspection before they move on. Wow. Uh, another order for purpose records. It's hard to believe that you once had to weld these by hand. I mean, someone had to actually weld these. And then this is our, so if you see each dolly, Dolly one. Good, good. And we're marking anytime we have a problem. So 2G, 2H, them are weld locations within the dolly That's, where we had a problem. Gotcha. So we can document it and then uh, continue to improve it. Continuous wow. improvement. To this one, so we're good to go. There's the dolly checklist. Clock's counting down. Wow. Here's aluminum axles are getting loaded on this one. Okay, Jeremy. Yes. So cool. And then we can... So that's their automatic foaming machine. So it, it injects foam into the bag. And now it's going to swell up and seal and package within it. I want to buy a side-by-side -side just so I can buy accessories from you. There you go. <laughs> but you can watch you fill the bag up. It injects two chemicals out of these drums, shoots the foam in, and then they can decide how big a bag they want. Oh, wow. 
Some of the things cool. that they've learned is pulling the paper and crunching it took too much time. <laughs> Throw that in there somewhere. What? Did you get that? Like, to that again. Get, you got to get that. So it used to take a lot of time to pull the paper and crunch it, so they come up with this machine. <laughs> That's amazing. Whatever so it takes to you're not wasting time. It's all about efficiency. efficiency. All the decisions and everything in here were driven by the people actually doing the work. Can I do one? Yeah. Step on the pedal. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> That's funny. Let me show the scale you guys got here. Is that going to hurt you? So they come up with an idea. They put the bander in here so they can band the product. And then when they want to weigh it, they just step on the pedal and the scale comes out. <laughs> so that we way believe they don't have in, to move it to a scale because it's already on a scale. Right. It's called Kaizen. So wow. anybody here can change anything as long as they meet with two other people, pitch the idea, and then they make the change. Wow. So whose idea was that? That was before you. <laughs> so raise your back. What's the light tell you? Yep. They're waiting, waiting on, on product. Waiting on product. Yep. So that big bottleneck you saw at the lasers where all them carts were. Oh, okay, yeah. It doesn't do any good for them there. We need them spread out so they're trying to get flow going. So gotcha. we maybe people from here might have been asked to move over there. I got gotcha. you. That makes sense? Yeah. So this is our sh packaging, um, outgoing products, uh, two shipping benches. What do we ship in UPS boxes a day, guys? A couple uh, hundred? Depends on the day. Um, sometimes we're hitting about 80, 90. 80, 90. Packages, and you know, we'll average probably about eight or nine pallets a day. Wow. Out, so, yeah. Wow, busy, awesome. Busy, busy. <laughs> That is crazy. <laughs> this is our automatic pallet wrapper. Uh, here's dolly assembly. So this is pretty neat. Um, so again, they're waiting on products. Yep. Um, this is a dolly assembly cell, so it's pretty interesting. So they have, um, when you load your dolly in here, you push a button and it flips it over and it locks it, right? And then these lights right here, if I can make this work, these come out. I got come down. This, they just started putting it in. And these sensors look down at the spindles because a couple times we've had to send out service bulletins if somebody forgot to put the cotter key in. Mm. So now this electronically looks down at the spindle to make sure and that gives that a green light whether or not the dolly is ready to go. Wow. Then here's a cool one. Make sure I want to make sure you can see it. So when we used to put the dust cap on, we used to put the dust cap in here, put it on the hub and pound it with a hammer and you can kind of see that it's been pounded a few times. Right. And then one of the operators in here came up with this idea. So now it's <laughs> on an air hammer and on a tool balancer. So it comes down, wow. wax it on, and then the tool hangs. Man. Then we were having problems with uh, the spindle nuts. So we've gone to a sealed bearing. Are you familiar with that? No. So we offer two types of dollies now. One of them is our through spindle grease okay. only or uh, our sealed bearing, and I don't see one out right now. Oh, here's one. So this sealed bearing is off of basically the front wheel hub of a Honda Fit car. Wow, wow so it's serious. This is serious, yeah. yep. We got it right from the manufacturer that provides <laughs> them. Cool. So this hub will never need grease for the entire life of, that of you've that owned dolly. your dolly. That is crazy. That now, is huge. it requires a special torque setting on the nut. Mm -hmm. So this is a $2,500 torque ratchet that sets a pre-described amount of torque on it. This comes from the automotive industry. And then we also have methods to validate it to 
confirm that it's continually torquing at the at the preset. Wow. But if you notice everything, uh, there's the electronics. Our guys designed this system <laughs> and they're just putting it in right now. But pretty intelligent people work here. Wow. <laughs> that is so cool. Products, these are going to BA products. So we've already shipped for today. Oh, that's for BA, huh? Yep. That's gotta be a huge um, customer of yours, yep. BA. BA and yep, Zips, great. it's gotta be huge. Absolutely, great fits. Yeah, cool. We have another company in South Korea that does about the same. Wow, that's really cool. Um, here's some outdoor, uh, outdoor or product ready to be shipped. And I wanna make sure, we gotta make sure we look at the new building. Absolutely. But I wanna show you engineering. Okay. Oh yeah, that's up where your yep. office is. Yeah, we ha I, And we'll do yeah, that. We can't miss that. Get a drink of water, I'll yeah. go pee. Boiler room. <laughs> That's good. So this is your engineering This is our department. engineering department. Yeah, we have, I think, eight, eight mechanical engineers. Rocking out to some Taylor Swift. You know? <laughs> every company has an yeah, issue no with kidding. the music, right? Yeah, you can't please everybody. But up here, we have rapping Thursdays. We That's got awesome. Celtic Tuesdays. That's Def awesome. Punk huh? Def Punk Friday. Def Punk. <laughs> so, That's awesome. See our Kanban system for Yep. Pins, paper. Um, when you're out, everything. You put the card on. Yep, close that door. Wow. We built our own stand up desk. Jeez. That's awesome. We wanted to Those really set strong. the tone that we're engineers. Here, Kyle's working on uh, the keyboard. keyboard. So he's oh, the in charge of that project okay. and we'll be releasing the keyboard. Are you going to be making TV mounts, like wall TV mounts, that do the same kind of thing? Or is that, that's been done? Okay, fine. <laughs> Chris working on a windshield. Cool. Um, oh, well, you need to show you SolidWorks. So let's say you called and let's go to a hood hinge. You lose a hood hinge. He can click on that. I can open up this whole assembly right here. And then, I mean, just how easy it is to change things. I can click this, make the hole bigger. Oh, wow. <laughs> and just slightly change. Oh, there it goes. Okay. And then we can send that right to the laser right now and have it cut and bent. Really? Mm -hmm. yep. We could have that to you by the time you get to the, I mean, within 30 minutes. That is crazy. If, you know, we'd have to bump some stuff. But so this is the platen part that we'd send to the laser after it's bent. Wow. And then assembled in the assembly right there. <laughs> We've got all the hardware in there and everything. That is so cool. And then we do FEA, like on our dollies, where they run it through uh, finite element analysis. Mm. And then here, Andrew's programming the press brakes. This is a very complex bend that I didn't think he was capable, or that we, I didn't think we could do it, but, yeah. but I wanna show you, let me show you that some so cool, cool stuff. Oh. So that's all bent on the press brake. Wow. So figure out how you do that. Look in the end, though. That was a flat sheet of metal. Yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> That's crazy. Let me show it on the camera, because I want you to really know. That's, to, I mean, if you're into sheet metal, that's a crazy, crazy yeah. thing. And okay. then uh, we're buying a new tube laser. So um, that what we're really excited about is like part fitment. So you can laser cut these two holes. Feel how strong that joint is. Wow. That's and, cool. And then wow. we've indexed this part and this part. What do you call that? Error proofing? What do they call it in Japan? Come on, you know the answer. I don't remember. Yes, you do. I, I need more training. Okay, okay. Poke, okay, yeah. Poke, because you okay. can't put it together backwards. Okay. Ah, I see. I need more training. Okay, you'll get there. <laughs> I got faith in you. And then... Uh, yeah, that's cool. So we're doing a lot of 3D printing. So here's an example where we 3D printed our anchor puller. Oh, okay. And tested the concept and then... Wow. Make it, then we machine it out of aluminum. That's so cool. Well, here we are at our new facility. I'm pretty excited to share it with you. It's 90,000 square feet. Wow. And 
it's, you know, when, when COVID hit, we had to make a decision, me and my wife and my family about, you know, we're, I'm 55 years old and we're about to put it all on the line. Mm -hmm. And we really felt this sense of community and the sense to our employees that this is the right thing to do. And we didn't feel we were going to do anybody any good. And as I mentioned earlier, we really want to run. We want to be able to offer training in the evenings. We want to be able to give back and do something great while we're here on the earth. But what's really neat is we've got a 80 person training center going in. We have a huge, and I'll, I'll point it out to you, exercise center going in. We've got showers. We really believe in personal wellness. I'm very excited we put an elevator in, even though we don't have to, because I really feel uh, we want to open our doors to disabled people and make sure that we're, you know, we're in, we have inclusion and that everybody's applying for work here. And we, uh, we have 50 some odd office desks going in. People have, uh, every, almost everybody will have a window. We've got a cafe wow. going in it. It's, that's so cool. Uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, our powder coating system is 165 feet long, fully automated. So cool. It, uh, is the cafe open to the public? No. Okay. All right. No, no, it's private. Okay. Um, we were going to put in a, I mean, my goal, my mom was a single mother, so we really wanted to put in a daycare center, but we just couldn't pull that one off. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, it's just going to be amazing. It's just going to be utterly amazing.